Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Laura Howell, the Executive Artistic Director of the People Shakespeare Project, and we are proud to bring you our second live Shakespeare event, Taming of the Shrew Abridged. This time we're proud to partner with one of Lancaster's highly respected nonprofits, Christmas Addicts Community Center. The center strives to improve the quality of life for youth and families in Lancaster by providing services that promote community prosperity, physical and mental health, and by offering programs and cultural events which preserve the African-American heritage. Your donations tonight will be shared equally between this worthy organization and the People Shakespeare Project. After all, we need community and we need the arts more than ever. Simply click on the Linktree website below the video screen uh, that will take you to both our donation and the survey site pages. Or go to the PayPal button on our website. That's easy too. And thank you to our board of directors, our volunteers, our wonderful company of actors, and our amazing technical geniuses all coming together to make sure we keep theater alive during these difficult times. And thank you. We hope to entertain you, make you laugh, make you feel, and make you think all very worthy theater and Shakespearean goals. And we hope you take a few minutes after the show to take a short survey on our Facebook page. And short of meeting you and greeting you in the lobby after the show, it's, it's a way that we can communicate with each other and we can get your reaction. So we'd really appreciate that if you can take five minutes. And one thing more, know that if there are any technical difficulties, which there may be, you will be notified immediately and um, just stay with us. And we'll be right back on screen in just a minute or two. So without further ado, please turn off your cell phones. Sorry, just had to say that. And enjoy the show. Scene one, a piazza in Padua, Italy. Enter our tourists, Lucentio and Tranio. Ah, Tranio! Since for the great desire I had to see fair Padua, nursery of arts, I'm arrived for fruitful Lombardy. Here let us breathe and happily institute a course of learning and ingenious studies. <laughs> Only, good master, while we do admire this virtue and this moral discipline, uh, no profit grows where is no pleasure tain. In brief, sir, study what you most affect. Stranio, <laughs> well dost thou advise. But stay a while. What company is this? Master, some show to welcome us to town.
as I was saying, did you listen? Gentlemen, importune me no further. For how I firmly am resolved, you know, that is, not bestow my youngest daughter before I have a husband for the elder. <laughs> there, there, Hortensio, will you any wife? <laughs> I pray you, ma'am, is it your will to make a stale of me amongst these mates? Mates? Maid, how mean <clears throat> that? No mates for you, unless you were of gentler, milder mold. <laughs> Indeed, it is not halfway to her heart. But if it were, doubt not her care should be to calm your noddle with a three-legged stool and paint your face and use you like a fool. From all such devils, good lord, deliver us. And me too, good lord. Gentlemen. <sighs> Bianca, get you in. And let not it displease thee, good Bianca, for I will love thee ne'er the less, my girl. But it is best to put finger in the eye, and she knew why. Sister, content you in my discontent. <laughs> Ma'am, to your pleasure, humbly I subscribe. Sorry I am that our goodwill affects Bianca's grief. Why will you mew her up, Signora Baptista, for this fiend of hell? <laughs> Content ye. I am resolved. Go in, Bianca. And for I know she taketh much delight in music, instruments, and poetry. Schoolmasters will I keep within my house fit to instruct her youth. If you, Hortensio, or Signor Gremio, you know any such, prefer them hither. And so farewell. Katerina, you may stay. Why, and I trust I may go too, may I not? Ah! <laughs> <sighs> You may go to the devil's dam, your gifts are so good. Here's none will hold you. Farewell. Yet, for the love I bear my sweet Bianca, if I can by any means light on a fit man to teach her that wherein she delights, I will wish him to her mother. <laughs> it toucheth us both, that we may yet again have access to our fair mistress and be happy rivals in Bianca's love, to labor and affect one thing specially. What's that, I pray? Mary, sir, to get a husband for her sister. <laughs> a husband? A devil? I say a husband. I say a devil. Hush! Gremio, though it pass both your patience and mine to endure her loud alarums, why, man, there be good fellows in the world would take her with all faults and money enough. I cannot tell. But by helping Baptista's eldest daughter to a husband, we set her youngest free for a husband. Sweet Bianca, happy man be his dole. I am agreed. And would I had given him the best horse in Padua to begin his wooing that would thoroughly woo her, wed her, and bed her, and Rid the house of her? <laughs> Come on. Uh. <laughs> I pray, sir, tell me, is it possible that love should of a sudden take such hold? <laughs> Tranio, I burn. I pine, I perish, Tranio, if I achieve not this young, modest girl. Assist me, Tranio, for I know thou wilt. Master, you looked so longly on the maid, perhaps you marked not what's the pith of all. Tranio, I saw her <laughs> coral lips to move, and with her breath she did perfume the air. Oh, sacred and sweet was all I saw in her. I pray, awake, sir. If you love the maid, bend thoughts and wits to achieve her. Thus it stands. Her eldest sister is so cursed and shrewd that till her mother rid her hands of her. Master, your love must live a maid at home. Tranio, what a cruel mother's she. 
But art thou not advised? She took some care to get her cunning schoolmasters to instruct her. I marry, am I? Oh, and now tis plotted. I have it, Tranio. Oh, master, for my hand, both our inventions meet. Jump in one. Uh, tell me thine first. You, you shall be schoolmaster and undertake the teaching of the maid? That's your device? <laughs> it is. May it be done? Uh, not possible, for, for who shall bear your part? Be here in Padua, Vincentio's son. Thou shalt be Master Tranio, in my stead. <laughs> I will some other be, some quarantine. Tis hatched, and shall be so, Tranio, at once, uncase thee. Uh, take my silk tie, and uh, my jacket. <sighs> And um, when Biandello comes, he waits on thee. I will charm him first to hold his tongue. Ooh, here comes the rogue. Uh, Sirrah, where have you been? Where have I been? Nay, how now? Where are you, master? Has my fellow Tranio Stolen your clothes, <gasps> or you stolen his, <gasps> or both? <gasps> Pray, what's the news? <gasps> Sirrah, come hither. It is no time to jest. Uh, your fellow Tranio here, to save my life, puts my apparel and my countenance on. For in a quarrel since I came ashore, I killed a man, and <laughs> fear I was descried. Uh, Wait you on him, I charge you, as becomes, while I make way from hence to save my life. You understand me? Aye, sir. Narrow wit. Tranio ah, is changed into Lucentio. Ah, better for him would I were so too. <laughs> Tranio, let's go. And one thing more rest that thyself execute, to make one among these wooers. Thou ask me why, sufficeth my reasons are both good and weighty. Been too. Meanwhile, more visitors arrive in Padua. Petruchio and his servant, Grumio. Ah, Verona, for a while I take my leave to see my friends in Padua. But of all, my best beloved and approved friend, Hortensio. And I trow this is his house. Here, Sir Grumio, knock, I say. No, sir. <laughs> Whom should I knock? Is there many has refused your worship? Villain, I say, knock me here soundly. Knock you here, sir? Why, sir? Who am I, sir, that I should knock you here, sir? Villain, I say, knock me at this gate and wrap me well around knock your knave's bait. My master is grown quarrelsome. <laughs> I should knock you first. And then I know after who comes by the worst, by the worst. will it not be? <laughs> now knock when I bid you, sirrah villain. Oh now, what's the matter? <laughs> My old friend Grumio, and my good friend Petruchio, how do you all at Verona? Signor Hortensio, <laughs> come you to part the fray? Rise, Grumio, rise. We will compound this quarrel. He bid me knock him and wrap him soundly, sir. Well, is it fit for a servant to use his master soul? Sirrah, be gone or talk not, I advise you. Tell me now, sweet friend, what happy gale blows you to Padua from old Verona? Ah, such wind as scatters young men through the world to seek their fortunes farther than at home, where small experience grows. But in a few, Signor Hortensio, thus it stands with me. Antonio, my father, is deceased, and I've thrust myself into this maze, happily to wive and thrive as best I may. Crowns in my purse I have, and goods at home, and so I'm come abroad to see the world. I come to wive it. 
wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then happily in Padua. I can, I can, Petruchio, help thee to a wife. With wealth enough, and young and beauteous. Her only fault, and it is false enough, is that she is intolerable cursed. I would not wed her for a mine of gold. Hortensio, peace, <laughs> thou knowest not gold's effect. Tell me her mother's name, and tis her, enough. Her mother is Baptista Minola, an affable and courteous gentlewoman. Her name, is Katharina Minola, renowned in Padua for her scolding tongue. <laughs> I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her. I pray you, sir, let him go wild to him, alas. On my word, if she knew as well as, if she knew him as well as I do, she would think scolding would do little good upon him. You know him not, sir. Terry. Petruchio, I must go with thee, for in Baptista's keep my treasure is. She hath the jewel of my life in hold, her youngest daughter, beautiful Bianca. <laughs> Therefore, this order hath Baptista tain, that none shall have access unto Bianca till Katharina the Cursed can get a husband. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Katharina the Cursed! Uh, a title from eight of all titles the worst. Now shall my friend Petruchio do me grace and offer me disguised in sober robes to dear Baptista as a schoolmaster, oh. well seen in music to instruct Bianca, and unsuspected court her by herself. <laughs> oh. Oh. Master, 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 look about you. Ah. Ah. Who was that? Peace, Grimio, it is the rival of my love. Petruchio, stand by a while. Grimio enters with Lucentio, now disguised as the scholar Cambio. Grimio decides to hire Cambio to instruct Bianca. Hortensio, not to be outdone, says that he too has found a musician to tutor Bianca. And he shares the good news that his friend Petruchio has come to woo and wed Catherine. Oh, sir, such a life with such a wife were strange, but if you have a stomach, to it in God's name. <laughs> you shall have me assisting you in all, but uh, will you woo this wild cat? <laughs> will I live? <laughs> will he woo her? <laughs> I or <laughs> <hang her. laughs> Why came I hither but to that intent? Think you a little din can daunt mine ears? Have I not in my time heard lions roar? Huh? Have I not heard the sea puffed up with winds, rage like an angry boar, chafe with sweat? And do you tell me of a woman's tongue who gives not half so great a blow to hear? Tush, tush. Fear boys with bugs, for he fears none. <laughs> Hortensio, hark. This gentleman is happily arrived, my mind presumes, for his own good and ours. <laughs> gentlemen, God save you. Tell me, I beseech you, which is the readiest way to the house of Signora Baptista Manola? Ah, she that has the two fair daughters? Is she, you mean? Even she, Biandello. Hark you, sir, you mean not her to, um... Perhaps, sir. What have you to do? Now, instead of two rival suitors for Bianca's hand, there is a third suitor. Grimio and Hortensio are not happy, but make Tranio agree to help pay Petruchio's wooing costs. The motion's good indeed, and be it so. Petruchio, I shall be your Ben... Venuto. <laughs> Scene three. A room in Baptista's house. <laughs> Good sister, why do you not nor wrong yourself to make a bondmaid and a slave of me? Of all my suitors, here I charge thee tell whom thou lovest best. Oh. See thou dissemble not. Believe me, sister, of all the men alive. <sighs> 
have never yet beheld that special face which I can fancy more than any other. Minion, thou liest! Is not Hortensio? <sighs> oh, if you affect him, sister, here I swear, oh. I'll plead for you. <sighs> you shall have him. Uh, well, then belike you fancy riches more. Oh. You will have Gradio to keep you fair. <laughs> Is it for him you do envy me so? Oh, oh. nay, then you jest. And now I well perceive you have but jested with me all this while. I prithee, Sister Kate, untie my hands. Oh, if that be jest, then all the rest was so. Oh. Ah! 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 Whence grows this insolence? Why dost thou wrong her that did ne'er wrong thee? Oh. Bianca, get thee in. What, what, will you not suffer me? Nay, now I see. She is your treasure. She must have a husband. Talk not to me. I will go sit and weep till I can find occasion of revenge. Oh, ah. ever gentle dame, so grieved as I. <sighs> but who comes here? Good morrow, neighbor Baptista. Good morrow, neighbor Gremio. God save you, gentlemen. Ah, <clears throat> and you, good dame, uh, pray, have you not a daughter called Katharina, fair and virtuous? I have a daughter, sir, called Katharina. Turkio explains he has come to woo Catherine for his wife. Baptista is amazed, yet hopeful, as Petruchio convinces her that if anyone can do it, he can. And he introduces the musician Litio as musical tutor for the sisters. Not to be outdone, Grimio steps forward and introduces Cambio as another tutor for the sisters. Finally, Tranio enters and introduces himself as yet another suitor for Bianca and tells Baptista that he is Lucentio, son of the very wealthy Vincentio of Pisa. A mighty man of Pisa. By report, I know him well. You are very welcome, sir. Take you guitar and you the set of books. Hola within. Sirrah, lead these gentlemen to my daughters and tell them both. These are their tutors. Bid them use them well. We will go walk a little in the orchard. Uh, Signora Baptista, my business asketh haste, and every day I cannot come to woo. Then tell me, if I get your daughter's love, what dowry shall I have with her to wife? After my death, the one half of my lands, and in possession, 20,000 crowns. <clears throat> Let specialties be therefore drawn between us, that covenants may be kept on either hand. I, when the special thing is well obtained, that is her love, for that is all in all. Why, that is nothing, for I tell you, mother, I am as peremptory as she proud-minded. And where two raging fires meet together, they do consume the thing that feeds their fury. Well, mayst thou woo, and happy be thy speed. But be thou armed for some unhappy words. Ah! Oh, 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 how now, my friend? Why dost thou look so pale? For fear, I promise you. Ah, ah. <clears throat> for fear, I promise you, if I look a pale. What? Will my daughter not prove a good musician? I think she'll sooner prove a soldier. Why? Then thou canst not break her to this music? Why no, for she hath broke the music on me! I did but tell her she mistook her frets, when with a most impatient and devilish spirit, Frets call you these? Quoth she, I'll feud with them! And with that word she struck me on the head! <laughs> Now, by the world, she is a lusty wench. I love her ten times more than e'er I did. 
proceed in practice with my younger daughter. She's apt to learn and thankful for good turns. Signor Petruchio, will you go with us? Or shall I send my daughter Kate to you? I pray you do. I will attend her here <laughs> and woo her with some spirit when she comes. Say that she rail. Why then I'll tell her plain, she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. <laughs> say that she frown. I'll say she looks as clear as morning roses newly washed with dew. <laughs> oh, but here she comes. <clears throat> and now, Petruchio, speak. <clears throat> Good morrow, Kate. For well, that's your name, I hear. Well, have you heard, but something hard of hearing. They call me Catherine that do talk of me. You lie in faith, for you are called plain Kate. <laughs> and Bonnie Kate, and yeah. Kate the curse. But Kate, the prettiest Kate in Christendom, hearing thy mildness praised in every town, <laughs> thy virtue spoke of. Oh. And thy beauty sounded, <laughs> myself am moved to woo thee for my wife. Moved? In good time. Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. I knew you at the first you were immovable. Why, what's immovable? A joined stool. Well, thou hast hit it. Come, sit on me. Asses are made to bear, and so are you. Women are made to bear, and so are you. No such jade as you, if me, you mean. <laughs> ah! Well, come, come, <laughs> wasp, in faith you are too angry. If I be waspish, best beware my sting. Uh, my remedy is then to pluck it out. I, if the fool could find it where it lies. Who knows not where a wasp does wear his sting in his tail? In his tongue. Whose tongue? Yours, if you talk of tales, and so farewell. What with my tongue in your tale? <laughs> Nay, come again, good Kate. <gasps> I am a gentleman. <laughs> ah, oh, you must not look so sour. It is my fashion when I see a crab. Why, here's no crab, and therefore look not sour. There is, there is. Then show it me. Had I a glass, I would. What, you mean my face? Well, end of such a young one. Nay, hear you, uh, Kate. In sooth, you scape not so. I chafe you if I tarry. Let me go. No, not a whit. I find you passing gentle. <laughs> Was told me you were rough <laughs> and coy. <laughs> and sullen <laughs> and now i find report a very liar oh for thou art pleasant oh, gamesome <laughs> passing courteous <laughs> but slow in speech yet sweet as springtime flowers Go, fool, and whom thou keep'st command. Did ever Diane so become a grove as Kate this chamber with her princely gait? Where did you study all this goodly speech? Am I not wise? Yes, keep you warm. Thus, <laughs> 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 in plain terms, your mother hath consented that you shall be my wife. <coughs> your, your dowry greed on, and, and will you, will you, oh, I will marry you. <laughs> oh, for I am he and born to tame you, Kate. Here comes your mother, <coughs> never make denial. I must and will have Catherine 
to my wife. Now, Signor Petruchio, how speed you with my daughter? How but well, ma'am, how but well. It were impossible I should speed amiss. Why, how now, daughter Katharina, in your dumps? Call you me, daughter? Now, I promise you, you have showed a tender, motherly regard to wish me wed to one half a lunatic. Mother, tis thus. Yourself and all the world that talked of her have talked amiss of her. And to conclude, we have agreed so well together that upon Sunday is the wedding day. I'll see thee hanged on Sunday first. <laughs> oh. Hark, Petruchio, she says she'll see thee hanged first. Is this your speeding? Nay, then good night our part. <laughs> if she and I be pleased, what's that to you? I tell you, it is incredible to believe how much she loves me. I, I know not what to say, but give me your hands. God send you joy, Petruchio. Tis a match. <laughs> Amen, say we. <laughs> we will be witnesses. <laughs> Mother and wife and gentlemen, adieu. I will to Venice. Sunday comes apace. We will have rings and things and fine array. And kiss me, Kate. We will be married on Sunday. Ah! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt he has got a quiet catch. <laughs> But now, Baptista, to your younger daughter. I am your neighbor and was suitor first. And I am one that loves Bianca more than words can witness or your thoughts can guess. Youngling, thou canst not love so dear as I. Greybeard, thy love doth freeze. But thine doth fry. His deeds must win the prize. And he of both that can assure my daughter greatest dower shall have my Bianca's love. Say, Senor Gremio, what can you assure her? Gremio goes on to tell Baptista about all his possessions, his lands, and his wealth. He is a rich man indeed, but his wealth can't compare to Lucentio's, as Tranio explains that whatever Gremio has, he has ten times more. I must confess, your offer is the best. And let your father make her the assurance she is your own. Else, you must pardon me. If you should die before him, where's her dower? That, that is but a cavil. He is old, uh, young. And may not young men die as well as old? Well, gentlemen, I am thus resolved. On Sunday next, you know my daughter, Katharina, is to be married. Now, on the Sunday following, shall Bianca be bride to you, if you make this assurance, if not, to Senor Gremio. And so I take my leave and thank you both. <laughs> Adieu, dear neighbor. <laughs> Now I fear thee not. Sirrah, young gamester, your father were a fool to give thee all. Tut, a toy, an old Italian fox is not so kind, my boy. Vengeance <laughs> 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 on your crafty withered hide. Uh, Tis in my mind to do my master good. Oh, I, said, I see no reason but supposed Lucentio must get a father called supposed Vincentio. Scene four, in Baptista's garden. <laughs> Position. Forbear, you grow too forward, sir. Uh, when in music we have spent an hour, your lecture shall have leisure for as much. Give me leave to read philosophy. Oh. While I pause, serve in your <laughs> harmony. Oh. 
Sirrah, I will not bear these braves of thine. Why, gentlemen, you do me double wrong to strive for that which resteth in my choice. And to cut off all strife, here sit we down, take you your instrument, play you the wiles. His lecture will be done ere you have tuned. You'll leave his lecture when I am in tune? That will be never. Uh, tune your instrument. <laughs> Where left we last? Lucentio begins reading a Latin passage to her, but when she asks him to translate it, he uses the opportunity to explain to her that he is the real Lucentio, son of Vincentio, and he has come to court her for his wife. Bianca likes him, but she isn't sure if she should believe his story just yet. Fiery and forward our pedant is. Now for my life, the knave doth court my love. In time I may believe, yet I mistrust, but let it rest. Now, Lydio, to you. You may go walk and give me leave a while. My lessons make no music in three parts. Are you so formal, sir? Well, I must wait. And watch withal, for but I'd be deceived. Our fine musician groweth amorous. Now it's Hortensio's turn. For his music lesson, he passes Bianca a page of music to sing. Hidden in the music is a secret love letter explaining that he has come to plead for Hortensio's love. Huh. Oh, this music? Tut, I like it not. Old fashions please me best. I am not so nice to change true rules for odd inventions. But farewell, masters both, I must be gone. Faith, mistress, then I have no cause to stay. But I have cause to pry into this pedant. Methinks he looks as though he were in love. So, Bianca, if once I find thee ranging, Hortensio will be quit with thee by changing. Scene five. Signor Lucendio, this is the appointed day that Katharina and Petruchio should be married. <laughs> Uh, and yet, we hear not of our son-in-law. What says Lucentio to the shame of ours? No shame, but mine. I must forsooth be forced to give my hand opposed against my heart unto a mad-brained rose be full of spleen, a wound in haste, and means to wed at leisure. I told you I he was a frantic fool. How will a thousand point the day of marriage and never means to wed where he hath wooed? Patience, good Catherine, and Baptista too. Upon my life, Petruchio means but well. Would Catherine had never seen him, though. No, oh, master, master, news, old news, and such news as you've never heard. Is it new at all, too? How may that be? Why is it not news to hear of Petruchio's coming? Is he come? Why no, ma'am. What then? He is coming. When will he be here? Oh, when he stands where I am and sees you there. <laughs> but stay, what to thine old news? Why, Petruchio is coming in a bright red glittery Santa hat with a big pom-pom on the bottom and a green old hockey jersey with white stripes, a massive, Fluffy boa wrapped around his neck and gloves. Ooh, purple lace with him. Why, ma'am, his lackey for all the world caparisoned, like the horse with this just massive floral hat. It's so big. It's the biggest purple and green. I don't. Ooh, a monster. A oh. big monster. I am glad he's come. Howsoever he comes. Oh, why, ma'am, he comes not. Didst thou not say he comes? Who? 
that Petruchio came. I that Petruchio came. No, ma'am. I say his horse comes with him on his back. <laughs> Why, that's all one. Come, where be these gallants? Who's at home? Oh, you are welcome, sir. Uh, and yet I come not well. <laughs> not so well apparelled as I wish you were. Gentles, methinks you frown. And wherefore gaze this goodly company as if they saw some wondrous monument, some comet or unusual prodigy? <laughs> Why, sir, you know this is your wedding day. Why doth this habit shame to your estate, an eyesore to our solemn festival? Sufficeth I am come to keep my word. But where is Kate? I stay too long from her. The morning wears. Tis time we were at church. Be not your bride in these unreverent robes. Go to my chamber, put on clothes of mine. Not I, believe me. Thus I'll visit her. But thus I trust you will not marry her. Good sooth, even thus. Th th therefore have done with words. To me she's married, not unto my clothes. But what a fool am I to chat with you when I should bid good morrow to my bride and seal the title with a lovely kiss. <laughs> Kate, Kate, I'm coming for you, Kate. He hath some meaning in this mad attire. We will persuade him, be it possible, to put on better ere he goes to church. He hath some meaning in his mad attire. We will persuade him, be it possible, ere he go to church. Now, sir, the true Bianca let us at her mother's liking, which to bring to pass, I am to get a man. What's where he be, and he shall be Vincentio of Pisa, and, and make assurance here in Padua of greater sums than I have promised. But we shall you marry sweet Bianca with consent. T'were good, methinks, to steal our marriage, which once performed, let all the world say no. I'll keep mine own despite of all the world. <sighs> Is the bride and bridegroom coming home? A bridegroom, say you. Tis a groom indeed, a grumbling groom, and that the girl shall find. <laughs> what? Cursed her than she, why it is impossible. Why, he's a devil, a devil, a very fiend. And Grimio goes on to describe the wedding ceremony, complete with Petruchio hitting the priest, swearing and drinking all the wine. It was a shocking fiasco. Such a mad marriage never was before. Hark, hark, I hear them coming. 
Gentle ones and friends, I thank you for your pains, and so it is my haste doth call me hence, and therefore here I mean to take my leave. Is possible you will away tonight? Well, we must away today, before night come. And, honest company, I thank you all that have beheld me give away myself to this most patient, sweet, and virtuous wife. <laughs> Let us entreat you to stay till after dinner. Uh, it may not be. I am content. Let me entreat you. Are you content to stay? I am content. You shall entreat me stay, but yet not stay and treat me how you can. Now, if you love me, stay. Grumio, my horse. Aye, sir, it be ready. Nay, then! Do what thou canst. I will not go today. No, nor tomorrow. Not till I please myself. The door is open, sir. There lies your way. Oh, Kate, content thee. Prithee be not angry. I will be angry. What hast thou to do? Aye, Mary, sir. Now it begins to work. Gentlemen, forward to the bridal dinner. I see a woman may be made a fool if she had not a spirit to resist. Obey the bride, you that attend on her, but for my bonnie Kate, she must with me. Nay, look not big, nor stamp, nor stare, nor fret. <laughs> No, I will be master of what is mine own. Huh? She is my goods, hmm? my chattels, she is my house, my horse, my ox, my ass, my anything. And here she stands. Touch her, whoever dare. Grumio, draw forth thy weapon. We are beset with thieves. <laughs> Stay away, she's mine! Patriarchy! Oh. Nay, let them go. A couple of quiet ones. <laughs> <laughs> Went they not quickly, I should die with laughing. <laughs> of all mad matches, never was the like. Actress, <laughs> what's your opinion of your sister? That being mad herself, She's madly mated. <laughs> I warrant him, Petruchio is gated. <laughs> Lucentio, you shall supply the bridegroom's place. And let Bianca take her sister's room. Shall sweet Bianca practice how to bride it? She shall, Lucentio. Come, gentlemen, on the armor. <laughs> Scene six, late that night, in front of Petruchio's country house. I fie on all mad masters and all foul ways! <clears throat> Was ever man so tired? Hola! Ho! Curtis! Who is that called so coldly? A piece of ice! A fire, good Curtis! Is my master and his wife coming, Grumio? Aye, Curtis, aye. Is she so hot as true as she's reported? Well, she was, good Curtis, before this frost. But, you know, winter, it tames men, woman, and babe. There's fire ready, and therefore, good Grumio, the news. Where's the cook? Hmm? Uh, is...
six, late that night in front of Petruchio's country house. Fie, fie on all mad masters and all foul ways. <gasps> Was ever man so tired? Oh, oh, Curtis! Who is that called so coldly? A piece of ice. I'll fire with Curtis! Is my master and his wife coming, Grumio? Oh, I, Curtis. Is she I. so hot a shrew as she's reported? Well, she was, good Curtis, but before this frost. You know, winter, it tames men, women, and the bees. Uh, there's fire ready, and therefore, good Grumio, the news. Where's the cook? Huh? Is supper ready? House trim? Cob wet, swept, and everything in order? Already, and therefore I pray thee the news. And then I begin. Impermis. We came down a foul hill, and my master was riding behind my mistress. Both of one horse? <laughs> What's that to you? Oh, you tell the tale. <gasps> but if you had not cursed me, you should have heard. You should have heard how her horse fell and she under her horse. You should have heard in how miry a place, how she was being mild, how he left her with the horse upon her, how he beat me because her horse stumbled, how I cried, how the horse ran away, and, and many things worthy memory. But this reckoning he is more shrew than she. I, and that you and the proudest shall find when he comes home. Oh, and therefore, la, 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 la. Silence, I hear my master. La, 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 that's a more. Oh, where be these knaves? What? No man at door? Here, here, sir, here, sir. Here, sir, here, here sir. Here, here. You logger headed and unpolished stales. <gasps> Where is the foolish knave I sent before? Here, sir, as foolish as I was before. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Go, rascals, go, and fetch our supper in. Ah. <sighs> Sit down, Kate, and welcome. Soon, soon, soon. Soon! Come, Kate, sit down. I know you have a stomach. <laughs> Will you give thanks, sweet Kate, or else shall I? <laughs> What's this? Mutton? I. Who brought it? I. <laughs> Tis burnt, and so is all the meat. There, take it to you. Trenches, guts, oh, and all. You heedless jokeheads and unmannered slaves. I pray you, husband, be not so disquiet. The meat was well if you were so contented. I tell thee, Kate, twas burnt and dried away, and I expressly am forbid to touch it, for it engenders choler, planteth anger. And better twere that both of us did fast, since of ourselves ourselves are choleric, than feed it with such over-roasted flesh. Be patient. Tomorrow it shall be mended. And for this night, we'll fast for company. Come, I will bring thee to thy bridal chamber. It's never see the like. He kills her in her own humor, Grumio. Where is he? 
in her bedchamber, making a sermon, a continency to her. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Away, away, for he is coming hither. Ow. Ow, 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 that's a more. <clears throat> we ate no meat today, nor none shall eat. Last night we slept not, nor tonight we shall not. And thus I'll curb her mm, mad and headstrong humor. <laughs> they that know better. How to tame a shrew? Now let them speak. Hmm? 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 This charity to show. Hmm? 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 Scene seven. Back in Padua, outside Baptista's house. I tell you, sir, Bianca bears me fair in hand. Sir, to satisfy you in what I have said, stand by and mark the manner of his teaching. Now, mistress, profit you in what you read. What, master, read you? First resolve me that. I read that I profess the art of love. <laughs> and may you prove, sir, master of your art. <laughs> well, you, sweet dear, prove mistress of my heart. <laughs> Constant womankind, uh, I tell thee, Lydio, this is, is wonderment. Mistake no more. I am not Lydio, but one that scorned to live in this disguise for such a one as leaves a gentleman. No, sir, that I am called <gasps> Hortensio. Signor Hortensio? I, I will with you. If you be so contented, for swear Bianca and her love forever. I will be married to a wealthy widow ere three days pass, which hath as long loved me as I have loved this proud, disdainful haggard. <laughs> ah. oh. And so, farewell, Signor Lucentio. <clears throat> Mistress Bianca. <clears throat> Nay, I have tamed you napping, gentle love, and have forsworn you with Hortensio. Tranio, you just have you both forsworn me. Mistress, we have. Then we are rid of Lydio. <laughs> <laughs> Master, I have watched so long that I am dog weary, but at last I find an ancient angel coming down the hill will serve the turn. <laughs> what is he, Rianello? <laughs> I know not what, okay. but formal in apparel, in gait and countenance, surely like a father. And what of him, Tranio? If he be credulous and trust my tale, I'll make him glad to seem Vincentio of Pisa and make assurance here to Baptista Manola. Let's take in your love and then let me alone. <laughs> God save you, sir. And you, sir, you are welcome. What countryman, I pray? Uh, of Mantua. Of Ma Mantua, sir. <laughs> and come to Padua, <laughs> careless of your life? My life, sir, how I pray, for that goes hard. Tis death for anyone in Mantua to come to Padua. To... Uh, uh, no, you not the boat. Uh, uh, your ships are paid in Venice, and, and the Duke for private quarrel twixt your Duke and him, he published and proclaimed it openly. Uh, Alas, sir, uh, I have bills for money by exchange from Florence and must here deliver them. Oh, bills. Uh, well, sir, this will I do. And this I will advise you. But first, tell me, have you ever been to Pisa? 
Uh, I, sir, in Pisa, have I often been? Among them know you one Vincentio. I know him not, but I have heard of him. A merchant of incomparable wealth. He is my father, sir. <laughs> oh. And suit to say, in countenance, somewhat doth resemble you. As much as an apple doth an oyster, and all one. <clears throat> now Tramio has found the perfect person to pose as Vincentio, Lucentio's father. Tranio has so frightened the merchant that he will do anything to save his own life. He will act the part of Lucentio's father and reassure Baptista of his son's wealth. Then Baptista will happily give Bianca to Lucentio. Tranio's plan is working perfectly. In all these circumstances, I'll instruct you. Go with me to clothe you as becomes you. Scene eight, back at Petruchio's house. Please, please, I'm so hungry. Please, Cromeo, No, 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 pursuit. I dare not for my life. Mm -mm. <laughs> the more my wrong, the more his spite appears. What, did he marry me to famish me? I am starved for meat. Giddy for lack of sleep, with oaths kept waking and with brawling fed, and that which spites me more than all these wants. He does it under name of perfect love. <sighs> I prithee go and get me some repast. I care not what, so it be wholesome food. Who see you to a turkey leg? Passing good, I prithee let me have it. Ah, uh, I fear it is too colored meat. Um, what see you to a uh, fat tripe, finely broiled? I like it well, good Grumio. Is it me? Uh, 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 mm, I, I cannot tell. I fear it is too colored. Mm, what say you to a piece of beef and mustard? A dish that I do love to feed upon. Aye, uh, but the mustard is too hot a little. Why then, the beef and let the mustard rest. Nay then, I will not. Mm, you shall get the mustard, or else uh, you get no beef of Grumio. Oh, then both, or one, or anything thou wilt. Why then the mustard get out the beef? <laughs> Go! Get your gun, you false deluding slave that beats me with the very name of meat! Go get the gun, I say! No! <laughs> mm. ah. <clears throat> How fares my Kate? Oh. What, sweeting, all the mort? Mistress, what cheer? Faith as cold as can be. Pluck up thy spirits, look <sighs> cheerfully upon me. Here, mm. love, thou seest how diligent I am to dress thy meat myself and bring it thee. Hmm? I, I am sure, sweet Kate, this kindness merits thanks. Oh. <sighs> What, not a word? Nay, then thou lovest it not. I pray you let it stand. The poorest service is repaid with thanks. I thank you, sir. Come, Mistress Kate, I'll bear you company. Kate, okay. eat apace. <sighs> and now, my honey love, will we return unto thy mother's house with silken coats and caps and golden rings, with ruffs and cuffs and petticoats and things. Uh, what, hast thou dined? Hey. Oh, the seamstress stays thy leisure to deck thy body with a ruffling treasure. Mm. Come, seamstress, let us see these ornaments. Here is the cap that your worship did bespeak. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Beautiful. 
platform. A velvet dish. Fie, fie, it is lewd and filthy. Away with it. Come, let me have a bigger. I'll have no bigger. This doth fit the time. And gentlewomen wear such caps as these. When you are gentle, you shall have one too, and not till then. That will not be in haste. <laughs> Why, sir, I trust I may have leave to speak. My tongue will tell the anger of my heart, or else my heart concealing it will break. And rather than it shall, I will be free even to the uttermost as I please in words. Why, thou sayest true. It is a paltry cap. I love thee well, that thou likest it not. Love me or love me not, I like the cap, and it I will have or I will have none. Thy gown, why I, come, seamstress, let us see it. <laughs> why, what in devil's name, seamstress, callst thou this? I see she's like to have neither cap nor gown. <laughs> You bid me make it orderly and well, according to the fashion and the time. Marry and did, but if you be remembered, I did not bid you mar it to the time. I never saw a better fashioned gown. But like you mean to make a puppet of me. Oh, why true, she means to make a puppet of thee. She says your worship means to make a puppet of her. Oh, monstrous arrogance. Thou liest, thou thread, thou thimble, thou flee, thou knit, thou winter cricket, thou. <gasps> I tell thee, I, that thou hast marred her gown. Your worship is deceived. The gown is made just as my master had direction. Grumio gave the order how it should be done. Grumio. I gave him the order. I gave him the stuff. But how did you desire it should be made? Merry woman with needle and thread. But did you not request have it cut? I say to you, I bid your master cut out the gown, but I did not bid him cut it into pieces. Ergo, you lie. Why? Here's the note of fashion to testify. Read it. The, the note lies in short if she say I said so. Impermiss, a loose bodied gown. Master, master, if I ever said loose bodied gown, show me to the skirt of it and beat me to death to get a bottle of brown chin. I said a gown. Proceed. With a small compassed cape. <laughs> I compassed the cape. With a wide sleeve. I compassed two sleeves. <laughs> the sleeves. Curiously, cut! Aye, there's the villainy. Arrow in the pill, sir. Arrow in the bill. I commend that the sleeves should be cut out and sewed up again. And that I'll prove upon you, even if your little finger be armed in a thimble. <laughs> This is true, that I say, and I should have thee in a place where <gasps> thou shouldst know it. I am for you straight. Get to the bell. <laughs> give me your, give me your, that's it. Ah, and spare me not. God of mercy, <laughs> then, then she shall have no one. <laughs> Hortensio, Hortensio, say thou wilt see the seamstress pay. <clears throat> Go, take it hence, be gone and say no more. Seamstress, I'll pay thee for thy gown tomorrow. Take no unkindness of his hasty words. Away, I say, commend me to thy master. Oh, <laughs> well, come, my Kate, we will unto your mothers, even in these honest, mean habiliments. Our purses shall be proud 
our garments poor, for it is the mind that makes the body rich. What? Is the jay more precious than the lark because his feathers are more beautiful? Oh no, good Kate, and neither art thou the worse for this poor furniture and mean array. <laughs> ah, let's see, I think tis now some uh, seven o'clock, and well we may come there by luncheon time. I dare assure you, sir, tis almost two, and twill be supper time ere you come there. Look what I speak or do or think to do. You are still crossing it. Sirs, let it alone. I will not go today. And ere I do, it shall be what o'clock I say it is. <laughs> Why so this gallant will command the sun? D9, Padua. At Baptista's house, Tranio has instructed the merchant how to act the part of Lucentio's wealthy father, Vincentio. Sir, this is, is the house. Place it you that I call. I, what else? But sir, here comes your boy. To a good he were schooled. Fear you not him. Shara, Diandello, now do your duty truly, I advise you. Imagine toward the right, Vincenzo. Hmm? Oh, a tut. Fear not me. Signora Baptista, you are happily met. Sir, this is the gentle dame I told you of. Ah. I pray you, stand, good father, to me now. Give me Bianca for my patrimony. Oh. Soft son. <laughs> Man. By your leave, having come to Padua to gather in some debt, my son, Lucentia, made me acquainted with the weighty cause of love between your daughter and himself. <laughs> I am content in a good father's care to have him matched, and if you please to like no worse than I, upon some agreement me shall you find ready and willing with one consent to have her so bestowed. Right true it is. Your son Lucentio here doth love my daughter, and she loveth him. And therefore, if you say no more than this, and pass my daughter a sufficient dower, the match is made, and all is done. Your son shall have my daughter with consent. I thank you, ma'am. Where, where then do you know we may be best betrothed and such a certain stain as shall with either part's agreement stand? Not in my house, Lucentio. For you know, pitchers have ears and I have many servants. Um, then at my lodging, and it like it. It likes me well. <laughs> Biondello, hi you home. And if you will, tell Bianca what hath happened. Lucentio's father is arrived in Padua, and how she's like to be Lucentio's wife. <laughs> oh, I pray the gods she may with all my heart. <laughs> Signora Baptista, shall I lead the way? I follow you. <laughs> Cambio! Cambio! Cambio, where are you? What sayest thou, Biandello? Ah, ooh. Baptista is safe, talking with the deceiving father of a deceitful son. And what of her? Her daughter is to be brought by you to the supper. And then? The priest of St. Luke's Church is at your command at all hours, huh? And what of all this? I... Ah, we need... Take you assurance of her to the church. Take the priest, clerk, and some sufficient honest witnesses. My master hath appointed me to go to St. Luke's to bid the priest be ready to come against you. Come, ah, uh, with your appendix. <laughs> May and will, if she be so contended. Ah, uh, it shall go hard if Cambio go without her. <laughs>
Scene 10, a public road on the way to Padua. <laughs> ah, good Lord, how bright and goodly shines the moon. The moon? The sun, it is not moonlight now. I say it is the moon that shines so bright. I know it is the sun that shines so bright. Now by my mother's sun, and that's myself, it shall be moon or star or what I list, or ere I journey to your mother's house. Yet ever more crossed and crossed, nothing but crossed. They, as he says, or we shall never go. <laughs> Forward, I pray, since we have come so far, and be it moon or sun or what you please. And if you please to call it a rush candle, henceforth I vow it shall be so for me. I say it is the moon. I know it is the moon. Nay, the... Oh. <laughs> Nay, then you lie, it is the blessed sun. Then. God be blessed, it is the blessed sun. Ah. But done, it is not when you say it is not. And the moon changes even as your mind. What you will have it named even that it is. And so it shall be so for Catherine. Petruchio, go thy ways, the field is won. Well, forward, forward. <laughs> But soft, here comes company. <clears throat> Good morrow, gentle s mistress. Where away? Tell me, sweet Kate, and tell me truly too, hast thou beheld a fresher gentlewoman? Sweet Kate, embrace her for her beauty's sake. <laughs> he will make the man mad to make a woman of him. Young, budding virgin. Fair and fresh and sweet. Whither away or where is thy abode? Happy the parents of so fair a child. Why, why, how now, Kate? I hope thou art not mad. Oh, no. This is a man. <gasps> old, <gasps> wrinkled, <gasps> and withered. And not a maiden, as thou sayest he is. Pardon, old father, my mistaking eyes that have been so bedazzled with the moon. <laughs> <laughs> do, do good old grandsire, and withal make known which way thou travelst, if along with us we shall be joyful of thy company. My name is called Vincentio, my dwelling Pisa, and bound I am to Padua there to visit a son of mine, which long I have not seen. What is his name? Lucentio, gentle uh, sir. Happily <laughs> <laughs> met, the happier for thy son. Now I may entitle thee my loving father. The sister to my wife, this this gentlewoman, thy son by this hath married. Wonder not, nor be not grieved, she is of good esteem. <laughs> <laughs> Let me embrace with old Vincentio. Ah. <laughs> oh, but is this true? <laughs> I do assure thee, father, so it is. Come, come along and see the truth hereof. <laughs> <laughs> well, Petruchio, this has put me in heart. Have to my widow, and if she be froward, then hast thou taught Hortensio to be untoward. <laughs> Scene 11, Padua, before Lucentio's house, the lovers plan their elopement. Ah, sir, here's the door. This is Lucentio's house. 
thither must we, and here we leave you, sir. You shall not choose but drink before you go. I think I shall command your welcome here. <laughs> What's he that knocks as he would beat down the gate? Is Signor Lucentio within, sir? He's within, sir, but not to be spoken withal. Do you hear, sir? I pray you, tell Signor Lucentio that his father is come from Pisa and is here at the door to speak with him. Um, uh, thou liest! His father is here, looking out at the window. <laughs> ah, art thou his father? Aye, sir. Why, how now, gentlemen? Why, this is flat knavery to take upon you uh, another man's name. Lay hands on the villain! Oh! 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 Pretty, oh. pretty, Kate, Kate, let's stand aside and, and see the end of this controversy. Hmm? I have seen them in the church together. Oh. Ah! Oh. But who is here? Oh! Mine old master Vincenzo, and now we are undone and brought to nothing. <laughs> Come hither, you rogue. Watch, have you forgot me? Uh, forgot you? <laughs> no, sir, I could not forget you, for I have never seen you before in all my life. <laughs> Watch, you <laughs> notorious villain. Didst thou never see thy master's father, Vincenzo? What, 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 my, my old worshipful old master? Yes, Mary, sir. See where he looks out the window. Oh, is so indeed. Ah! Yeah, oh, help, help, help. Ah! 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 The madman will murder me. Help, son, help ah! us. Ah! 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 What are you that offer to beat my servant? What am I, sir? Nay, what are you, sir? Oh, immortal gods! Oh, fine villain, a silken tie, a fine jacket. Oh, I am undone! I am undone! Oh. Now, what's the matter? What is the man lunatic? Why, sir, what cerns it you that I wear silk and gold? I thank my good father I'm able to maintain it. Die. Father, oh villain, he is a blacksmith in Bergamo. You mistake, sir. You mistake, sir. Pray, what do you think is his name? His name, as if I know not his name. I have brought him up ever since he was three years old, and his name is Tranio. Away, away, lad ass. His name is Lucentio, and he is mine only son and heir to the lands of me, Signor Lucentio. Oh, my son, my son! Tell me, thou villain, where is my son, Lucentio? Uh, um, carry this mad dame to jail! Uh, away with the daughter, to jail with him! The strangers may be hailed and abused, oh, monstrous villain! Oh, we are spoiled, and look yonder he is! Deny him, forswear him, for we are all undone! Uh, uh, pardon, sweet father! lives, my sweet son. Pardon, dear mother. How hast thou offended? Where is Lucentio? Uh, here is Lucentio. Right son to the right, Vincentio, that have by marriage made thy daughter mine. Why, tell me, is this not my cambio? Cambio is changed into Lucentio. Love wrought these miracles. Bianca's love made me exchange my state with Tranio. What Tranio did, myself enforced him to. Then pardon him, sweet father, for my sake. I'll slit the villain's nose that would have sent me to the jail. But do you hear, sir? Have you married my daughter without, without asking my goodwill? Oh, fear not, Baptista, we will content you. Go to, but I will end to be revenged for this villainy. And I to sound the depth of his knavery. Oh, oh. look 
look not pale, Bianca. Thy mother will not frown. <laughs> what husband? <laughs> Let's follow and see the end of this ado. <laughs> First kiss me, Kate, and we will. What, in the midst of the street? What, art thou ashamed of me? No, sir, God forbid. I will give thee a kiss. All right, let's just line it up here. I've been kind of drinking, so we'll just kind of sway and mwah. Mwah. Oh, <laughs> is not this well? <laughs> Come, my sweet Kate. Hmm. twelve. We are still at Lucentio's house, but thankfully peace has been established. All is forgiven and the wedding can now be celebrated. And I said, that's not a Capulet, it's a Montague. <laughs> <laughs> Montague. <laughs> oh, at last, though long, our jarring notes agree. Welcome to my house. Pray you sit down, for now we sit to chat as well as eat. Nothing but sit and sit and eat and eat. Padua affords this kindness, son Petruchio. <laughs> Padua affords nothing but what is kind. Hmm? For both our sakes, I would that were true. <laughs> hmm. Now for my life, Hortensio fears his widow. Never trust me if I be afeard. He that is giddy thinks the world turns round. Roundly replied. He that is giddy thinks the world turns round. I pray you tell me what you mean by that. Your husband being troubled by a shrew measures uh, my husband's sorrow by his woe. And now you know my meaning. A very mean meaning. Right. I mean you. <sighs> to her Kate. <laughs> to her widow. <laughs> As the party progresses, the women leave the table to Baptista and the men folk. Now Petruchio hits on a plan to test all three wives. Lucentio, Hortensio, and Petruchio agree to wager 100 crowns each that their wives will come when called. First, Bianca refuses to come when called. <laughs> and then the widow refuses Hortensio's entreaty. Now it is Catherine's turn. To everyone's shock, but Petruchio's, she comes right away. What is your will, sir, that you send for me? Where is your sister and Hortensio's wife? They sit conferring by the parlor fire. Away, I say, and bring them hither straight. Now, fair before thee, good Petruchio, the wager thou hast won, and I will add unto their losses twenty thousand crowns. <laughs> Nay, I will win my wager better yet. See where she comes and brings your froward wives as <laughs> prisoners to her womanly persuasion. <laughs> Catherine? I charge thee, tell these headstrong women what duty they do owe their lords and husbands. Come, come, you're mocking. We'll have no telling. Come on, I say, and first begin with her. <laughs> she shall not. I say she shall. And first begin with her. that threatening, unkind brow, and dart not scornful glances from those eyes to wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It blots thy beauty as frosts do bite the meads. Thy husband, 
is thy Lord, thy life, thy keeper, and hmm. for thy maintenance commits his body to painful labor both by sea and land to watch the night in storms the day in cold and craves no other tribute at thy hands but love fair looks and true obedience too little payment for so great a debt of such duty as the subject owes the prince even such a woman oweth to her husband. And when she is froward, peevish, sullen, sour, and not obedient to his honest will, what is she but a foul contending rebel oh. and graceless traitor to her loving lord? Mm -hmm. Come, come, you froward and unable worms. My mind hath been as big as one of yours. But no, I see our lances are but straws. Our strength as weak, our weakness past compare, that seeming to be most which we indeed least are. Then veil your stomachs, for it is no boot, and place your hand below your husband's foot, in token of which duty, if he please. My hand is ready. May it do him ease. <laughs> Why, there's a wench. Come on and kiss me, Kate. Tis a good hearing when children are toward. <laughs> well, what a harsh hearing when women are froward. <laughs> <clears throat> Come on, Kate. <laughs> we'll to the bedroom. <laughs> we three are married, but you two are zoomed. <laughs> Twas uh, I won the wager, though you hit the white. And being a winner, God give you good night. <laughs> Do you see their faces? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>